Good evening and welcome to another episode of Service to Humanity, a program tailored to bring you reports of activities from the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, as it carries out its mandate of providing social inclusion and protection for the nation's vulnerable. 5th of October 2022 has been set aside by the federal government to mark the National Day for Older Citizens, and last week, the maiden edition of that day was celebrated. That will be our focus in this week's episode of Service to Humanity. My name is Habiba Zoksog, your regular anchor. I'll be back shortly. I tell you, any time we're not producing, the fish farmers suffer. The people we engage suffer. The people we feed, that we give our fish heads to them. They feel it. I really beg the government to continue with this and make it grow more. We used to have children crying, parents will be chasing them to come to school and they'll be at the gate, they'll be crying. They will hold on to their parents, they will not want to come into the gate. When they are not giving the food, some the attendance was very low. Now the children are always fit and healthy because of the food we eat. We we'll make them attend class every day. I eat rice, plates and carrots. I want to use this opportunity to thank the federal government we begin the program with news from the ministry and her agencies. Our first report, federal government's budget $1.6 billion for school feeding and JIP. These and other stories in our management diary. Do stay tuned. The federal government has budgeted $1.6 billion for the National Homegrown School Feeding Program. Trader money, farmer money and market money in the 2023 appropriation budget, which was presented by President Muhammad Buhari to the National Assembly on Friday, 7th October 2022. The projects are part of the capital projects of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development as listed in the 2023 budget. According to the budget breakdown, a total of 1 billion naira was allotted for the homegrown school feeding program, while 600 million naira was set aside for trader money, farmer money and market money. The National Homegrown School Feeding Program which was introduced in 2016, is a government-led program that aims to improve the health and educational outcomes of public primary school pupils. It uses farm produce locally grown by smallholder farmers to provide children with nutritious midday meals every school day. While the Government Enterprise and Empowerment Programme, which began in 2018, provides the Trader Money an interest-free loan. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, has revealed that 1.4 million Nigerians have been targeted for the next round of the Government Enterprise and Empowerment Programme, JEEP. Farouk made this known at the inauguration of the programme in Dusi, the Jigawa State Capital. The Minister, who was represented by Dr. Nasir Gwarzu, the Ministry's Permanent Secretary, said the action was consistent with President Muhammad Buhari's efforts to end poverty in the nation. Farouk stressed that more than 70% of Nigerians lived in poverty when the Buhari administration took over in 2015 and that the president initiated various programs to bring many people out of poverty. Beneficiaries have been signed up for the various components of the Jeep, which include trader money, market money, vulnerable, underprivileged, and marginalized women. They shall receive interest-free loans ranging from 50,000 Naira to 300,000 Naira, depending on their businesses. Welcome back. On the 13th of December 1990, the United Nations General Assembly designated October 1st as the International Day of Older Persons. On the 17th of December 2021, during the first presidential summit on aging in Nigeria, 
President Muhammad Buhari instituted the annual National Day of Older Persons. The day is set aside fundamentally to highlight the invaluable contributions older people have made to society, as well as raise awareness of their needs, challenges, and opportunities. Last week, the National Senior Citizen Center marked the maiden edition of the day in Abuja, and our crew was there to bring us sights and sounds of the activities that took place. Let's see how it went. The National Senior Citizen Center, NSCC, marked the maiden edition of the Nigeria Day for Senior Citizens, themed celebrating the resilience of older women and men, from resilience to empowerment. The day kick-started with an awareness road walk on Wednesday, 5th October 2022, from the old parade ground in Abuja. <laughs> The Awareness Road Walk was led by the Director General of the NSCC and the destination was the headquarters of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Arriving at the headquarters of the NTA, they were received by the Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Salihu Abdul Hamid Dembos. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are here because this present administration of um, President Muhammad Buhari heeded the call of senior citizens at our first um, maiden dialogue, knowing that the International Day of Older Persons, which we usually celebrate, really clashes and obliterates the significance of the International Day of Older Persons, which is October 1st. So that prayer was made, and today we are celebrating the maiden edition, first edition of Nigeria dedicating October 5th as National Day of Older Persons. This present administration has instituted frameworks, strategies, programs, activities, and budget lines that has enabled this agency, NSCC, that was set up by law um, a year ago, to begin to roll back the many years of neglect, many years of discrimination, whether it be systemic or institutional discrimination, and roll back the many years of abuse, and now systematically begin to include older people in development. In his remark, the NTA DG, represented by the Executive Director of Administration and Training of the NTA, Steve Egbo, commended President Buhari for recognizing the need to identify senior citizens and for creating a center that would cater for their needs. A society that uh, neglects or forgets its older citizens is practically going nowhere because these older citizens are the foundations of every society. They lay the groundwork which coming generations will build upon. Having come to NTA, you've come to the right place. We'll, we'll let Nigerians know that there is um, a center like this, made up of uh, national senior citizens. We will also let Nigerians know what your objectives are. Friday, 7th October 2022 marked the closing ceremony of this 2022 celebration of National Day of Older Persons. The week ended with a Resilience to Empowerment conference organized by the National Senior Citizens Center. The event took place at the Rockview Hotel, Abuja, and had in attendance Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajia Sadia Umar Farouk, as the special guest of honor 
who was represented by the National Coordinator of the National Social Investment Programs and SIPs, Engineer Umar Binder. Also present were Chairman, NSCC Governing Board, AVM Muhammad Muhammad Retired, Senior Special Assistant to the President, Dr. Nasser Mahmoud, Minister of State for the FCT, Hajia Ramotitujani, among others. Delivering her welcome address, Director General of the NSCC thanked President Buhari for declaring a day to celebrate older citizens every year. Omokaru stated that the event signifies that inclusion and recognition of the contribution of Nigeria's older citizens to the development of the nation. Today's program is very unique. Unique in the sense that this, is, this will be the first celebration by NSCC. And this would really signify the fact that older persons are occupying also as other population groups are occupying in Nigeria. Now older persons indeed have been included in Nigeria's development plan. And the significance of their toil, their contributions, their experiences, their expertise and all that they have accumulated over the years can no longer be defined. So in celebrating the resilience of older men and women, we are really saying thank you so much for all that you have endured even when it seemed you were forgotten. In a recorded special address, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajia Sadia Umar Farouk, who was special guest of honor at the event, said, The National Day of Older Persons in Nigeria is set aside fundamentally to highlight the invaluable contributions of older people to the society as well as raise awareness of their needs, challenges and opportunities. My universal of action will strongly suggest leaving no one behind. The federal government has implemented and kept faith with the spirit of social inclusion, aid institutional policy, human resources, data production, and integration framework to effectively provide social inclusion for all the persons across all sectors of the nation's economy. Farouk added that the federal government's efforts reflect in the launch of the national policy on aging, development of a 10-year strategic roadmap and national plan of action on aging that will enable sustainable sector-wide inclusion and partnership. Establishment of a national senior citizen center by the federal government also brings about a formal shift from the research of considerable lack of attention and care to older persons' challenges and needs, along with the corresponding lack of recognition of older persons' rights to their inclusion in sustainable development agenda. On age-friendly environment, there's a national network support for senior citizens through dedicated media campaigns where core multi-sector indicators of age-friendly services and NSCC Age Watch Index by sectors are broadcast and deployed to ranking sector operators like banks, hospitals, transportation and aviation services amongst others for their compliance to ensure dignified services, discounts and concession protocols are provided for them. In his remark, Chairman of the NSCC Governing Board, AVM Mohammed Mohammed retired, stated that data has shown the increase in the number of older persons. As such, government and stakeholders should come up with policies and plans to help them function independently and more effectively for as long as possible. The latest projections by the United Nations shows that by year 2050, the number of persons aged 65 years and above worldwide will be more than twice the number of children under five years. Similarly, 
data from the National Bureau of Statistics from the Nigeria Living Standards Survey indicates that in 2019, 14.8 million Nigerians were 60 years and above. The implication of this is that as the population of the older persons is increasing in Nigeria, effective collaboration between governments and other stakeholders, including civil society, private sector, and the academia, is essential to the implementation of policies and plans to ensure that they can remain active and independent for as long as possible. You deserve all the hands, the help, and the honor. There was a spoken words poetry presentation in honor of senior citizens titled An Ode to Our Resilient Senior Citizens by Richard Oyegule, who was represented by Colette Mbamalu. Let me begin by registering. There was also a panel discussion on the topic, Older Persons in a Changing World, From Resilience to Empowerment, moderated by Kingley Osadolo, anchor of the television program Good Morning Nigeria. High point of the event was a tour of the Grey and Vintage Fair by the NSCCDG and guests at the event, which had displayed food and non-food items made by senior citizens. While interacting with the Director General of the NSCC, she had this to say. I can only begin by sincerely thanking the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Commander in Chief, President Mohamed Buhari. This has been the high cry of senior citizens for a long time. To be recognized, to be included, to be given a voice, opportunities to participate. And under this administration, it has come so true because you must start from the institutional infrastructure, you must start from articulating the challenges, that's the policy. You must start from asking yourself, how do we get this done? That's the strategy. And then you must start from also from dedicated entities. So, so who is in charge of this? And that's setting up the National Senior Citizen Center. And then, of course, you must also include them in the National Development Plan. Retired Deputy Controller of Prisons and FCT Chapter Chairman, National Association of Retired Paramilitary Officers, Moses Orupe, speaks about the National Day of Older Persons. For long, the senior citizens and the elderly in this country have been looking for recognition and uh, it's been so difficult that the elderly and the senior citizens are neglected. But thank God, with the establishment of the National Center for Senior Citizens, things are coming up gradually. And we believe that uh, very soon we'll get to the point where, for example, the subsidized transportation for the elderly, when they take public transport, is it the railway? Is it the public uh, land transportation? Is it the air? We pray that day will come very soon. We also believe that uh, very soon, with the establishment of the National Senior Citizens Centre, the day will come when you walk into a pharmacy, you'll be able to buy your drugs at a subsidized rate for the elderly. Bilke Subello retired as a civil servant in March 2022. According to her, having a center like the NSCC and coming up with programs and policies like those on ground would be quite helpful to senior citizens. I believe the program will be able to provide enabling environment for the older people to still be engaged in another way to, con to still continue to contribute to the development of this country.
You are still watching Service to Humanity, a sponsored program of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. The program brings you stories and activities from the ministry and her agencies. All the citizens in Nigeria have continued to laud the federal government for setting aside a day annually to have them celebrated, as well as developing programs and policies to give them a chance at social inclusion. During the celebration of the National Day for Older Persons, we chatted with some of them and they expressed their delight over recent developments in the country as it concerns them. Let's hear from them. The joy of having a day set aside nationwide to celebrate older persons in Nigeria can be seen in the faces of the older persons as well as from their testimonies. Sir Uche Okafo, a retired diplomat, says he is still strong and not tired even after participating in the road walk as he commends the government for creating a day for older persons to be recognized. I feel very strong to show that I'm still resilient. I'm, I've retired, but I'm not tired. It is worth doing every year. Although this is the first year, I recommend that we do that two times a year. Because the, 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 the retired people, the senior citizens, they need to have this to bring up their lives in their good service. Baba Shatima, a retired photographer, also shares the same views. Working is not a new thing for me. I work every day. Uh, in fact, my own profession, being a professional photographer, seven years back, I used to work. I don't stay in one place. I run the cameras, uh, uh, taking pictures of the IPs and so on. So, working is not anything to me. Me too, I'm affected being an elder citizen. So, if uh, the governments will continue this kind of thing, good for the retirees. Ignatius Uzoma, a member of the National Union of Pensioners, lords the Director General of the NSCC, M.M. Omokaro, for how much she has helped senior citizens to gain recognition. We have been enjoying uh, this present uh, Director General. This is a thing we had left for a long time until this woman came. So with Nigerian Union of Pensioners, they have been working hand in hand. Some of the senior citizens who had their items on display at the Grave and Vintage Fair stand during the closing ceremony of the National Day of Older Persons spoke about their business and life as older citizens. I don't think any person should just retire and hold and move. I think uh, life has to continue. You have to earn a living. Even if you have children, you have something doing, it's good to have something doing. I retired six years ago and I've been into this since five years. Yes, yeah, so I just embraced it as I retired. Then as time went, I got my NAVDAC number and I'm still on it. But we're having some challenges. Uh, we're having some challenges. Challenges of uh, we need our products to be exported out of the country for wider markets. And the, the, the uh, machines we need, we need machines for drying, washing, to enhance our production. And that's our package on this episode of Service to Humanity. Join me again same time next week and same station for more on the strides of the ministry and her agencies in reaching the nation's most vulnerable with the initiatives of the federal government to better their lives. My name is Habiba Zoksok, saying good night and God bless Nigeria.